Thank you, Steffi, for reading scripture. And uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, I was uh, looking at those, uh, all that food in the picture makes me feel very hungry. Uh, it indeed, as Praveen said, it was uh, very delicious. For some reason, I just enjoy Thai food. So um, thank you, uh, Sarita, for leading us. It looked the the songs were familiar and uh, so very well sung um, and I, I really enjoyed singing some of the old, uh, especially that hymn, uh, which we haven't sung in a long time. Thank you very much. You made a very interesting statement. You said, uh, uh, even though we don't know, we'll wake up next morning, we put our alarms and that is hope. So thank you for giving us that hope, right? And. Uh, Thank you, uh, Nelson, for leading us in the, in the prayer. And as you were uh, just focusing on some of the terrible things happening, and of course, uh, yesterday we were praying, we started our prayer ministry monthly. Uh, Joshila was sharing with us this terrible tragedy that has taken place with regards to the doctor who was uh, killed in, in Kolkata. Uh, and uh, Mr. Rao was sharing with me about the war and what's happening in the Middle East. There is so much of tragedy all around us. Uh, uh, you, you keep wondering, you know, why the world has become so horribly, uh, what do you say, violent. And yet, we have that sense of hope, as you shared, Sarita, that we read scripture, we study, and we know that there is a future, a wonderful future. So. Uh, let's keep our alarms on with that sense of hope, right? Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, my wife just shared with me that uh, Mrs. Uh, Madhu, who we prayed for celebrating a birthday, apparently had a, um, a fracture. I don't know how, but she is uh, not able to walk and she's laid up. And so um, we just hope that she will uh, recover soon. And uh, Maybe we can just offer a prayer for her. And as we do that, maybe I can ask the Sunday school children also to come forward and we'll pray for them as they go for uh, the study. Join me as I pray. Gracious, loving Father, uh, for a moment we just remember Madhu who's struggling with a fractured leg and pray for uh, your uh, healing for her and that Lord you will just help her to manage the pain and that she would be back on her feet we pray for our children as they go for their Sunday school your very special blessings upon Selena as she continues to bring uh, the hope of the gospel to these children that they may grow up to be your disciples in Jesus name we pray amen Um, right. I was returning home uh, some weeks back um, from that ECIL area, uh, and I was suddenly saw a big kind of a, like a, like a traffic jam, and and then I realized that uh, there were a lot of police there, and. Uh, all the bikes and cars were being stopped and the policeman was going around with something in his hand and I suddenly realized it was one of those breath analyzers and they were checking to see if uh, uh, they can catch some drunk people, drunk drivers. Um, and I, the man came close to me, I put my window down and he brought it close to me but for some reason he took it away. Uh, so. I, of course, I hadn't, not had any drinks, but uh, he, he probably looked at me and said, well, this fellow, you know I mean, he, he's hopeless. <laughs> I can't get any money out of him. So he just moved away. So um, uh, we all know that drinking under the influence uh, of alcohol uh, is dangerous, especially if uh, the influence is very strong. Uh, I was just looking up what happens when you are under a very strong influence of alcohol and you're driving. Apparently it 
it slows you down. Your reaction time becomes, be, becomes extremely sluggish. Or, and your coordination is not good enough. And so you're not able to coordinate uh, with the machine, you know, your, your, your uh, pedals and your steering. Apparently even it affects your concentration, makes, makes you lose concentration and you can uh, suddenly not uh, recognize something that is happening in front of you. Obviously it impairs your judgment uh, whether you should press the brake or the accelerator and maybe it will slow you down. And sometimes, and you know, you see double vision. Uh, you're not able to see very clearly and uh, you're not, your perception of depth becomes very, uh, very impaired. And interestingly enough, in the scripture that was read to us, uh, the Bible obviously confirms the effects or the ill effects of alcohol, excessive alcohol upon us. And uh, where it says in verse 18 in uh, that uh, chapter in Ephesians, do not get drunk on wine, it says, which leads to debauchery, which leads to sexual misconduct. And it's identifying one particular effect of excessive uh, alcohol, it, uh, you know, uh, makes you, influences you in a wrong way. And that is what is my uh, title of my message today. What is influencing you? Right? And if, as the Bible talks about alcohol, under the influence of alcohol, many tragic things can happen. Of course, I mentioned about driving, and you know how many accidents take place because of that. So many have lost lives because of that. So very, that's very tragic. But under the influence of alcohol, when if we can stay with alcohol for a moment, so many other things can happen. The Bible identifies sexual misconduct. It uh, makes you lose your judgment, and you begin to do things which you normally wouldn't do, uh, uh, you know, uh, regularly. Violence, how much of violence takes place because of the influence of alcohol? Uh, fights take place. What about road rage? People can become so upset and angry, uh, you know, and so this influence, un th under this influence, it can make you do things which you normally wouldn't do. Uh, some of you might remember, I think I remember, I don't know about Mr. Rao, but I know Anand, you remember that we had a maid at home and uh, our, our maid and her family lived there, but we didn't realize that uh, this man was uh, a drunkard and one night he came and uh, they had an argument and a fight and it was closer to midnight when uh, this man stabbed that lady and uh, we had to rush her to hospital, but she lost her life because of that, and uh, he was convicted. Uh, it is uh, very, very tragic when people are under that influence, and they conduct or they conduct themselves in a way which is so inappropriate and, ex and extremely violent. Uh, so, the Bible is talking about um, the influence of alcohol, but there is a contrast. If uh, Roshan can put that uh, scripture on the, uh, yeah, on the screen, notice in verse 18 it says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead be filled with the Spirit. Notice the contrast, right? You are not supposed to be influenced by these things. But instead be influenced by the Holy Spirit. In other words, being influenced is not wrong. Right? In fact, the scripture is encouraging us to be influenced. But the question is, what are you and I going to be influenced with? The contrast here is, don't be influenced by excess of wine. But instead, be influenced by the Holy Spirit, be filled by the 
Holy Spirit. Every one of us, every human being, whether we like it or not, are being influenced on a daily basis. We as human beings are naturally prone to being influenced. The question we have to ask is, what is it that is influencing us? The Bible suggests, be influenced by the Holy Spirit. All right? Uh, so, the intention of this passage in Scripture is to tell us that yes, all of us are going to be influenced by something or the other, and we hope that our influence is good. It, it, it has a good effect on us. It influences in the right direction. Right? And we just discussed wine. Uh, and the Bible says, don't be influenced by wine or get drunk on wine, as it says. Uh, we know that in the Bible itself, in other passages, it shows the good effects of wine. If you remember the Apostle Paul telling Timothy, have a little wine for your common ailments, you know, your ailments of your stuff. So, the question is, how are you being influenced by these things, right? And it just picks up wine there. But you know, there are so many other influences that can be even more dangerous than wine. There are many influences in this world. And I want especially our young, our young teenagers to understand that you are being influenced on a regular basis. Right? Very soon, as the sermon ends and the church ends, you will be going to uh, something that will influence you. Right? Every one of us are being influenced by social media. So, what I want to say is, we, whether we like it or not, we are going to be influenced. The question is, what are the things that can influence us? And as I said, there are things more dangerous than wine that can influence us. Let me, let me just pick up a few uh, and just discuss what are the things that can influence us in the wrong way. What about this thing called greed? Does greed influence us? It does, doesn't it? The Bible uses the word selfish ambition. Selfish ambition, that's the word it is used. Also, it, it also uses the word greed. But greed, an insatiable desire for more, it is something that, uh, so that makes you never being satisfied. You're never satisfied. That is when you're not satisfied, content, that is you're being influenced by greed. And when you are influenced by greed, it makes you to exploit people. It makes you to start doing things which you normally wouldn't do when you are not uh, influenced by greed. Greed influences us sometimes to steal, to become a thief, to start grabbing things which doesn't belong to us. That is a very real influence that all of us as human beings have to fight. We have to recognize that these, that greed is a very powerful influence in some people's lives. I mean, there are people who can just never stop being, you know, wanting more and more and more and more, right? Uh, I was just reading a report that, um, that the top 1% of our population controls how much of our wealth? Something like 40% of the country's wealth is controlled and in the hands of 1% of the population. Can you imagine how wealthy people are and they can never stop? They want more and more and more. What about lust? Is that an influence? Lust, right? Lust is a corrupted desire, an over-desire, right? It turns one into a manipulator. When you are influenced by lust, you try to manipulate others. Makes other people into an object. You do not regard the other person as an, an individual who has rights, but you try to manipulate 
because you're lusting after something. And of course, in the sexual context, that is, it is used mostly in that, where you treat the other person as an object and you, you use the person for your desire and discard the person like a piece of trash. And that is what has happened, right, in Kolkata. Why is that man? Why did that man do this? Do, do we know who that person is? I mean, is, there, is he caught? Not yet, right? I mean, he's caught, is he? Okay. Can you imagine? It uh, makes you to treat another person like trash, where you even go to the extent of killing the person. That is what happens when lust begins to influence you, right? What about envy or jealousy? Is that influencing any one of us? Did, do we have to fight envy and jealousy? Oh boy, all of us struggle with that, right? To some extent or the other, right? Ellis, uh, uh, envy and jealousy fuels negative emotions. It fuels emotions like resentment and anger. When you're jealous, you become, you resent the other person. You become angry with the other person. It corrodes the mental well-being. And it even when you are excessively influenced by jealousy and envy, it leads to anxiety and depression. And all of this is a destroyer of relationships. Right? It does not help you pursue good relationships when you are being influenced by envy and jealousy. Right? What about anger? Any one of us have a problem with anger? That's a powerful influence, very strong influence. Right? The Bible equates anger to hatred and hatred to murder. But many of us struggle with anger, don't we? Right? Rage leading to irreparable damage sometimes. Ruining relationships. Ruining our health. You know anger ruins our health. Physical and emotional health. And leading to long-term damage of our health. I'd like to look at one more thought. And I don't know if you ever realized about this influence. Unbelief. Do you know unbelief is an influence? It can influence you? Unbelief is a problem with many people. People who do not want to trust, who have no trust in them, right? Uh, even in the face of evidence, did you, you remember the Bible? Israelites did not enter the rest, why? Because of unbelief. The Pharisees did not believe in Jesus, trust Jesus. Why? Because of unbelief. Unbelief is something that makes you not to trust. In fact, I'm surprised to know that unbelief is actually a personality disorder. It's called paranoid personality disorder. It's a mental condition marked by long-term patterns of distrust and suspicion of others without adequate reason. Right? Uh, it affects our ability to love. Unbelief. Sometimes that is a powerful influence. And the question is, uh, are, we all, are we struggling with any of these influences in life? Whether we like it or not, like I said earlier, I, can, I, I need to repeat that again. We are being influenced. The question is, what is influencing us? The Bible says, uh, be influenced by the Holy Spirit. Let's just look at that passage once again. It says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. The Bible is saying, uh, be careful how you live. Take heed how you live. Don't be unwise. 
What does it mean? Or how, how does it connect with what we are saying? When we live with wrong influences in our lives, we are being unwise. When you allow yourself to be influenced by these wrong things that leads us astray and leads us away from good relationships, we are being unwise. That's what the Bible is saying. So it says, don't be unwise. Don't live with these wrong influences. Identify these influences. Make sure you are dealing with these wrong influences. Right? Uh, because why? It will make you to lose the opportunities of life. What, do, what does it say? Make the most of every opportunities because the days are evil. But when we are influenced by the wrong things, we lose opportunities. Right? We lose the purpose and meaning of life. Correct? Uh, it says the days are evil. Well, it, all, it basically is helping us recognize there is all kinds of evil influences that is taking place on a daily basis. So the days are evil because of all these wrong influences. And hence it says... Uh, uh, be wise. Verse 17 says, Therefore do not be foolish, but understand the Lord's will. Understand the Lord's will. Foolish. Don't be foolish. Uh, it's a double negative. Don't be unwise. Don't be foolish. Double negative. So God is, uh, the, the apostle here is helping us understand that there are many, many wrong influences, but be wise. Don't be foolish. Uh, don't allow these things to dominate our lives. Deal with it. Work with it. Ask for God's help to overcome these influences. That is the Lord's will, as it says. You know, know the Lord's will. The Lord wants you to be influenced, yes, but by the right things, not by the wrong things. Right? Verse 18 says, Do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? God's influence. Godly influence. That is what God wants us to be influenced by. Filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, what are you filled with? You're filled with love. You're filled with joy. You're filled with peace. Some of you already know what I'm trying to, where I'm going, right? You're filled with patience. You're filled with kindness. Want to finish it for me? You're filled with goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, the fruit of God's Holy Spirit. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, these are the things that you're influenced by. You're influenced by love and joy and peace. You're influenced by kindness and goodness. You're influenced by faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. That is the Lord's will. That we be influenced by this. Right? And when you're influenced by all of this, verse, notice in verse 19. Speaking, uh, you know, uh, um, verse 19 says... Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit. What does that mean? Does that mean that when we are filled with the Spirit, we go and start singing to everybody? Kahona, Pyar. Is that what it is saying? No, that's not what it is saying. What it is saying is, your speaking, your speech will be wholesome. It will be constructive. It will be encouraging. It will be soothing. It will be therapeutic. When we speak, it's, it's also like a singing, a lovely song going out from you. Bringing soothing feelings and togetherness and joy and peace with one another. That's what it is saying. It's not saying go singing, go sing and sing, sing to everybody. No, that's not what it's saying. It means that that singing, that speech of ours will be so good. All right. And then it goes on to say, uh, always giving thanks. So when you are speaking, it's, it, it, there is a gratitude that comes out, right? A thankfulness, an appreciation that comes out. There is praise that comes out. Things that comes out automatically from our lips when we are influenced by the Holy Spirit. 
And so you may want, you and I may want to check ourselves. What is coming out of our mouths? Jealousy, envy, hatred, anger, abuse. If that is what is coming, then your influence is some coming from somewhere else. It's not the Holy Spirit. It is not the Holy Spirit. All right? And then it goes on to say, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Like we did this, uh, you know, as we began uh, our worship. But can our lives become a worship? Our lives become a daily worship when we have good speech coming out of our mouth. It becomes like, you know, uh, a, 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 a praise, a music from the heart to the Lord. Verse 20, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving praise to God the Father. Right? Giving thanks to God the Father. Uh, God the Father who, who sent the Son. Right? Who sent the Son. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. A reminder for us that this happens only by Jesus Christ. It happens only in Jesus Christ. If it happens only if we are connected and, uh, you know, tied up with Christ our Lord. Right? So, question is, what is influencing you and me on a daily basis? As we wake up and when we hear that alarm go and we wake up, one of, one of the things I say, thank you, Lord, for a new day. But we, do we also ask God, please influence me by the Holy Spirit. Take away the lust and the envy and the greed. Help me to deal with those. Is that what we pray for? Right? In the speaking of life, Michelle, Michelle Hartman now, she got married. She's no more from Michelle Fleming. Uh, Michelle said, Christ is our living bread. And when we eat that bread, it influences us. Let Christ be our living bread, our influence on a daily basis. How? Through the filling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ promised us the Holy Spirit. Every day as you wake up, ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Because that is the influence that will help us. Right? Let us pray that we are allowing the influence of the Holy Spirit in us. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. A very, uh, uh, very popular verse with our former elder in Mumbai, uh, Mr. Matthew. He uses this all the time, if you have probably heard, heard him speak about it. It says, don't you realize that... All of you together are the temple of God. Have you heard of the temple of God? He constantly says, you are the temple of God. And the spirit of God lives in you. God will destroy anyone who destroys the temple. For God's temple is holy and you are the temple of God. What I understand from this is, we are the temple where the spirit resides. We have to allow that spirit to constantly be influencing us. Otherwise, we will be destroyed. If you don't allow the spirit to be influencing you, you will be influenced. Mark my words, you will be influenced by lust, greed, anger, hatred, jealousy, envy, selfish ambition. Those are destructive. Those are destructive. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? Uh, so that our lives can become like music to others. Our lives can be a soothing, loving expression of Jesus Christ our Lord. So that we can be the temple of God. God bless you all.